First tattoo, and what does it kind of lead to? First tattoo is the first time I think. Little right here. I have one of the tattoos for like, ever since I came to California and I saw this skater girl in Venice, like skating through everybody, and she was just full of and I wanted to so bad, but I knew my parents would hate me. So, but like the day I turned 18, I was just like, I'm going in, and I just got this new girl. And then I also the same day got sent to universe. So like, were you nervous your first time? So nervous. I was nauseous, like I wanted to poop. Out of all your tattoos, what would you call your favorite and why? Like, what makes you fuck with it so much? Honestly, probably my neck. Uh, Says don't panic, the title of one of my EPs. And uh, when I put out that EP, it was really, there's a bunch of emotions going on and I feel like it's my favorite because it was kind of like a commitment to being fearless and not even being fearless but just like feeling the fear and doing it anyway. And and I feel like it's not even just about don't care, you know, it's about living like living like you have no fear you want to do. Growing up in a small town, a lot of the times it's a small minded mentality. You don't wanna upset anybody. Like, I don't want to upset my dad. But it got to a point where I'm like, if I keep not doing things to make other people happy, I'm going to do everything alive. And so, I called her, my face tattoo's crying, and I'm like, Dad, getting my neck tattooed. <laughs> Alright, first things first, my first tattoo is ever. So, when I first started getting tattoos, they were all just very doodle-based. And, uh, so I started with these all uh, little small ones before all these were added on. I got the smiley first, number one. That's the universe, number two. Um, this little moon. Oh, moon, number three. These mountains, number four. Five, cassette, six, light bulbs. All these are just random stuff. The cassette does symbolize when I would sit in my car and make music and I would look up like type beats on YouTube, like I would look up easy type beats, very full type beats, heavy type beats, and I had my little cassette off, and I put the cassette in, and that's how I started making music. I got Who Makes Art This Way, that was from Mike Posner's book, and uh, he basically goes through the process of, he's like, I woke up this morning from, from a letter from an A&R, and it was a song from Pitbull. I wrote back and said, I don't even like Pitbull. And they said, yeah, but you're the number one hit. Who makes art this way? This one says, you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. And that actually, the, the final line of that quote is, and you have a right to be here, which I always wanted to say for maybe like the middle of my chest to appear somewhere, because it's just explaining that we are all equal parts of this universe. and. The trees and the stars and the sun and the moon and all of us people and animals, like, we're all the same and we're all just going through life. So, I want to get you have a right to be here somewhere bigger. Um, and that is my handwriting, too, so I think that's kind of cool. And so is that, actually. Um, and then I got this tattoo, which says, Nature is Looking. This was from uh, Michael Jackson, manager, actually. Um... Michael Jackson's manager said that Michael used to call him at 3, 4 in the morning and just be like, fireflies, we need fireflies. Hence the fireflies, actually. Fireflies, we need fireflies. Um, please, like, write it down, write it down. He's like, Michael, we can talk about this in the morning. He's like, no, we need fireflies because if we don't do it, Prince will. And it basically is going to say the universe gives the people with the most intention in life, the best ideas. Because the universe isn't going to give people ideas who, is, who they know isn't going to go for it. So when, you know, when Michael thought of things like fireflies, they acted on it immediately because they knew that if they didn't do it, 
the universe will pick somebody out. The biggest one at the time that I had gotten was this, which actually I really want to talk about because this goes, this is a huge part of like, do tattoos have to mean something? Um, so where I grew up in Indiana, um, next to the skate park, there was a tattoo shop called Cardinal Tattoo, shout out Ted, and they have a random box there where you basically pick two um, words out of a box and and whatever you get, it's like 50 or 60 bucks, something around there, and whatever you get, it's just get what you get. And That's so you it. get the two words and then the tattoo artist goes in the back and actually draws a combination of the two words. That's crazy. And so this, I think, was uh, Baby and Reaper, Random Box. This was Bug and Sun, Snake and Eye, Random Box, Random Box. But that's when I first got my biggest tattoo. And to be honest, when, when he came and he, <laughs> when he showed me the drawing of this fucking tattoo, at the time, I only had these doodles. So when he brought out that, I was like, oh my god, like that's a bold ass fucking thing to get. And that's when I just was like, you know what, we're going in. This was the first tattoo that I got when I moved to LA. And I think it's called Welcome to Paradise. But that was the first time I ever got color on my arm. And, and that day I decided that I was only going to get red. Um, so I got red on that one, red on that one. This tattoo is kind of cool. I was going through all the weird phases, you know, of moving to LA and feeling like I couldn't really trust anyone. So this is just some snake with a with a hand of cards that kind of, that says good luck. It just felt like everybody was like down to offer something, but nobody, you know, really meant it. But that's why I got this snake on the arm. This tattoo I got when I met Gary B. and. Uh, it says get more than you take. Basically, I I have looked up to Gary B since I was like 16, 17 years old. I was never really good at school at all. And he was the one person on the internet um, who was just posting videos of me and like, you don't have to be good at school. Focus on what you're passionate about. Focus on what you're good at and bet on yourself. And he was the first reason why I was ever like, you know what? I can do it. I, I don't know how, but I have a vision, and I want to make clothes, and I want to make music, and I want all this stuff. And um, ironically, when I got out of a major record deal with Epic Records, I put out my first independent song called In My Head. And uh, a couple of days later, yeah, Gary V had posted it and tweeted it, and it was just like, Let's me, I want to meet you. When can you come to New York? And I was already on tour at the time. And, Damn. And so I just went to New York and we met. And he was just like, I can't wait to look back at this video when you're one of the biggest artists in the world. And I was like, stop that right now. That's crazy. So I asked him if there was one thing to remember forever and what would it be? And so he wrote this on a paper for me. Give more than you take his signature and then the day we met. Well, that was last year. Damn. Last year, 7-23-19. So, that was just definitely a very surreal moment. I love you so much. I love you, it's dude. It's so obvious to me, you don't even know. Peace is always an option. This is actually with that guy over there. Yeah, that's my hand. I love my hand. <laughs> Mentally, it's up to us to manifest Good days, positive thoughts, positive thinking can change your whole life. Hell yeah. Life is a mirror. Life is a mirror. Right? I agree with you. Whatever you think, you can wake up and be like, what shitty thing is going to happen today? Or you can be like, I'm going to have an open mind today. Well, I bet something good's going to happen. Fact, you get fact. what you're looking for. If you go into the day and you think like, oh, what a shitty day. Like, just waiting for something bad to happen. You're gonna find it, cause that's what you're looking for. A box on the back of my arm right here somewhere. And that is the box that I promised myself would be bare skin for life. Take the ride. Yeah, oh yeah, take the ride. Self-explanatory, life's too short. Just go, go do what you wanna do. I got this one, this is, this is uh, me and my dad. 
He's always said to me growing up, this is going to sound so cheesy, but he's always said, row, row, row your boat. Uh, you know, row, row, row your boat, go down the stream. And he's like, yeah. gently down the stream. Stop trying to go upstream and to the left and in the rocky area. Just enjoy life. Don't forget to enjoy life. And he's like, and go down the stream. Just go with life. Go with the flow of life. Just go with wherever the wind takes you, wherever your heart takes you. And that's my dad's hand with a, a little canoe and, and some trees. Because he's like wilderness man. Like his biggest inspiration is Henry David Thoreau. Hasta la vista. That was my... Hasta la fucking vista to my label. From uh, this, I actually got with one of my supporters when they bought my merch, they actually wrote, feel the fear and do it anyway. And in the order, it was like, hey, can you write out this tattoo? I want you. She asked me to do that. I was going on tour. I was going to her city. So I'm like, listen. I'll write out this tattoo for you, and you write out this tattoo for me, and then we went to the shop together. We got it together in each other's handwriting. And her car wouldn't work, so I bought it. <laughs> and I really want, like, on one of my tours Sunday, think about this. If I had the part of the concert where, like, I picked somebody out of the crowd to get a tattoo with on stage. That would be sick as fuck.